hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, Space Cowboy here, it's another Mock Draft Monday for you guys here today, now before we get started, if you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button, that'd be greatly appreciated, as well as subscribing, and hitting that notification bell as well, the reason I ask that every single go around is because over 78.8% of you guys watching are not subscribed, and a lot of you are returning viewers, now if you would like to stick around and get more Cowboys content, by all means, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell as well. So if you are not aware, I have gone on vacation, and this is a pre-recorded episode, and in case you're wondering how we're doing things differently, this is going to be continuing our talks on what the Cowboys could do on draft day. So this is one of the scenarios. You're going to get another one on Wednesday, and then another one on Friday while I'm gone. So with that, we're just going to go through these picks, what could happen, and why the Cowboys could possibly make that selection, and by all means, follow along and think what the Cowboys could possibly do. If you guys have any suggestions on what they should do, put them down in the comment section below. So let's go ahead and get started. With the 26th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Steve Avila, guard, TCU. So the Dallas Cowboys pull the trigger on Steve Avila at 26, and with it, they fix up their left guard spot and give themselves flexibility if they don't want to pay Tyler Biotish because they could slide Steve Avila to center if need be. But with this, this kind of puts together the plan of Tyler Smith's going to be your left tackle, Avila's going to be your left guard, at center it's going to be Biotish for at least 2023, or if you extend him, he's going to be your center moving forward. Zach Martin at right guard, and then at right tackle, it's going to be Tyron Smith until Terrence Steele returns. So with that, the Dallas Cowboys fix up their offensive line. They get another stud there that should pair alongside Tyler Smith relatively well. And now the Dallas Cowboys can move out throughout this draft however they damn well wish. So with that, the Cowboys go with Steve Avila, the guard from TCU. Let's go ahead and move on to pick 58. The Dallas Cowboys select Jacqueline Roy, defensive tackle, LSU. So the Dallas Cowboys stick with the trenches but go to the defensive side of the ball to address it by taking Roy here at 58. The Cowboys do like him and in this entire draft process, I would not be shocked if he ends up being a Cowboy, whether this be at 58 or 90. This really depends on how the draft board falls. In this case, it's either you get him here at 58 or he's not going to be there at 90 and that's okay with me. Roy is a player where when you're taking him, you got to look at your defensive tackle room, similar to how I talked about it with Avila, and you got to keep in mind your center flex and all that other stuff. At the defensive tackle room, Hankins is on a one-year deal, and he's getting older. Odds are Gallimore is not going to get paid, and he's going to be gone. In the long, long term, you do have to think about Osa Odegazua, and if you're going to pay him, what that's going to cost, and do the Cowboys go down that route? If they don't elect to, you're not going to be best positioned. And I think that with Roy here, given with what has been said on film and scouting reports and stuff like that, he's a guy that has experience doing one and three tech things. There are those that say his best fit is to be a one tech, but can also fill in at three tech, which I think is something that the Cowboys really need to look at is developing a one tech that's really going to do damage on that defensive line and you know an actual starter not just a rotational piece and I think that Jacqueline Roy can definitely become a solid starter in this league if he develops properly and you know with what Dan Quinn has done here in Dallas I wouldn't be shocked if he took the Sam Williams approach where you ease him in the first year and then you just let him go in the second year and that's something where the Cowboys really have to take a look at. So I'm going to go with Jacqueline Roy here, and now we move on to pick 90. The Dallas Cowboys select Zach Evans, running back, Ole Miss. So the Cowboys decide to go with the running back at pick 90, and many people might be surprised at that. And if you're a fan that wants Ezekiel Elliott to return, this is going to slam the door shut. By selecting a guy like Zach Evans, he pretty much fits the mold of what you're looking to complement Tony Pollard. Zach Evans is a running back that's very physical, and he's more of your traditional power back. He's not going to be any receiving game threat or anything like that. 
he's definitely, if you're not going to pay Pollard, by the way, going to compliment someone that could do the things that Pollard does. So he has that big playability just like Pollard does, except he has a different type of mold of running back that you would want to, once again, compliment someone like Tony Pollard. The other thing, too, is by selecting Zach Evans, you basically have a four-year cheap deal on a running back. So, if you don't want to pay Pollard and you feel like, you know what, we don't need him, you can go into next year's draft and get someone that is like a Tony Pollard. And I think that that's where the Cowboys really need to protect themselves. And whether it's Zach Evans or another running back, I think it's imperative that they definitely invest in a running back in this draft, whether it be on day two or day three, doesn't matter to me. One of the other things that I'm really worried about with Evans is his pass protection, but that's something he can definitely work on. But again, you're getting a guy that is going to be your running back to moving forward, and it's just a matter of how you go about it. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if he gets a big brunt of the carries because of the type of running back he is. And that's really if the Cowboys want to go into the modern age of how to handle running backs, that is exactly how you're going to go about it. You get Zach Evans, you make him your power guy, and make him do his thing, and then you just move on to the next guy. As much as that sounds heartless, he's definitely going to be someone that will be a productive player for you for four years, and then you can move on. So guys, that is... Our mock draft scenario, if the Cowboys go with Steve Avila at 1, Jacqueline Roy at 2, and Zach Evans at 3. Now, with all that being said, we are going to have another mock draft on Wednesday, so stick around for that. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and hit the notification bell as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Goodbye.